This is The Chris Abraham Show. It is season four, episode eight of the Chris Abraham Show, nay, Chris Cast, and I'm here back at uh, Walter Reed Community Center Park, and we'll see if this uh, dead cat muff does any good at sorting out uh, sorting out the wind um, we are we don't know what we're doing today so I'm looking through this new app on my phone called Universum and it's an amazing Moleskine notebook uh, analog for my Android I don't know if you have it for uh, iPhone but it is awesome so I wrote an article about body battery, and I wrote an article about body battery, and oh, let me just write, let me just uh, share with you uh, about the power of just walking. Uh, I will talk about all about walking, especially for someone who's a hundred and forty pounds overweight so let me tell you why walking is so amazing and why I highly encourage it no matter how slowly you are how slow you are whatever and we'll talk about it and the wind is really blowing so we'll see if this bad boy uh, works with regards to the dead cat so uh, I'll see you when you come right back I'll talk to you soon Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is the Chris Abraham Show, Season 4, Episode 8. Ocho. Oct. Wheat. Etc, etc, etc. And I'm sitting here at, the, at a, a beautiful, green, peeling, falling apart, but still charming picnic table made out of wood and so forth under a grand tree overlooking all of the tennis courts that are now pickleball courts nobody's playing I guess 2 o'clock in the afternoon 2 2.25 2.25 in the afternoon is either too late or too early for pickleball madness today I decided because it's on my list to do a podcast about the power of just walking and a lot of people aren't into walking as a uh, as a exercise 
but I must say that if you've ever met anybody who likes to remain lean and they uh, there's two types of people who really rely on walking a lot the first type of people are weightlifters who need to cut like if you ever met a weightlifter they say that they don't do cardio and most of the case weightlifters and bodybuilders do not do cardio powerlifters do not do cardio but you'd be surprised how much walking they do they do obsessive walking they're obsessed with tracking their steps and the reason is is that um, nobody considers walking to be cardio so they're off the hook they can burn all the calories that they need to in order to cut weight uh, without needing to only starve themselves. The other people are people like, you know, Randy Santel, is that his name? And his girlfriend, um, uh, Katina Eats Kilos. And also dudes like, I think his name's Aaron or Adam. Adam Beard Meets Food. All those people who totally... Uh, competitive eat their way of dealing with all of that is of course they you know they go to the gym and they're all jacked you know from powerlifting or from lifting or from those kinds of things but they spend a lot of time I mean if you if you ever see introductions by Katina she's always like walking to her destination or doing introductions on walks and walking seems to be the go-to for people who just want to burn calories. They don't necessarily, aren't necessarily interested in optimizing their heart rate or maximizing their VO2 max, but they are interested in, in that. Now, find me someone who walks an hour or two a day, and I'll find you someone who's strangely in shape. Um, and who never gets injured. I think that some of the fittest people are dog walkers, especially dog walkers who don't just, you know, nip out and terrorize their dogs by only leaving the apartment so their dogs can can poop and pee. The people like, you know, my buddy and brother, Andrew Curry, who takes his dogs out, um, and when he does, he's gone for hours. He literally walks around the entire neighborhood. And I think that that is the kind of uh, walking that people need to do. I feel like it is what we've been built for. And even though I'm such a slow walker that I was walking down to Shirlington from Idito's Coffee and one of the new uh, baristas, uh, buzzed past me and she wasn't even going for a walk she was just walking home she just had her you know her handbag slung over her shoulder and she was in you know civilian clothing so I am a slow runner a slow jogger and a slow walker I blame the fact that I'm six foot three and only have a 32 inseam so I sort of um, walk uh, I don't remember the cartoon character who has a super big body and super short legs and sort of like, you know, they uh, they just sort of like wiggle, wiggle, wiggle down at the bottom of the body. I like to say that I'm like a Tyrannosaurus Rex where I have uh, huge quads and hips and calves and scrawny little uh, upper, scrawny little arms uh, like a... Uh, like a T-Rex, but it's not funny anymore because I'm actually uh, a big boy. And when we come back from the break, I'll talk about what it's like walking while morbidly obese and why it's such an amazing exercise for someone who might be ashamed and humiliated that they can't run anymore or can't do sprints, or can't do jogs, or can't, don't even feel capable of doing slow jogs, I'll tell you why simply walking around your neighborhood is such a formidable workout. And we'll come to that when we get back.
so there's this workout that um, people do, which they call farmer's carry. And, you know, for example, if you're a kettlebell guy, you'll carry uh, a 24, a 28, a 30, 32, uh, or 40 kilogram kettlebell in each, uh, in each uh, hand. Or, you know, you'll carry a 40 pound, uh, 60 pound, 80 pound, 100 pound kettlebell uh, barbell in each hand. And then you go for walkies. What it does, it, um, you know, it, it stresses your body, it hangs from your body, it, uh, it creates um, a uh, inertia, it creates um, momentum, it uh, works your core and your sides and your back and your glutes and your calves and your feet. And it also, uh, with an extra 100 pounds hanging off your body, it also jacks your heart rate. I mean, if you've ever tried to walk around with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or even, you know, if you're an uncle or mom or dad, even with, you know, your little kid on your shoulders or a couple kids in your arms and that kind of deal, you realize that if you're required to walk around, uh, you know, walk, take a walk with your family with two 50-pound uh, kids, and after a while, they're like, daddy, daddy, mommy, mommy, carry us, and then you finish doing your tourism, walking around, and before you know it, you're sweating, and your heart is beating, and you need to sit down. Well, that's what just walking about around your neighborhood, even without, like, I, I, I tend to carry a, a ruck or a bag with me, um... But at the most, like when the bag is completely full, it's, I don't think it's more than eight kilograms, you know, uh, maybe 20 pounds, maybe on a, on a big day. Uh, if I put 20 pound plate in there, it's heavier. If I put a 45 pound plate, it's heavier. But honestly, just walking around, uh, needing to, and it's not the same on treadmills. It's still useful on treadmills, like when I walk on Zwift, but what the real world makes you do is uh, the real world is not as flat as Kansas, right? Not as flat as, is Iowa flat? It's not prairie flat. You, in this neighborhood, there's stairs, there's curbs, uh, there's strange little up, ups and downs and downhills and uphills and strange little back roads that are quite curvy and quite uh, diverse and there are different types of uh, ground you know you've got and in a world uh, post-covid uh, everybody passes each other on the side of the road uh, off-road on a lawn etc and so walking around even slowly in the real world creates different body you know, requirements than just being on a treadmill and walking. So, just remember that unless you're 150 pounds or 180 pounds and you're light as a feather, uh, walking with an extra 50, 80, 100, 140 pounds on you is very much a workout in itself. When you go for a long, hour-long walk, two hour, three hour long, 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 long walk on the weekend, even if you're not slow jogging or shuffling or even, even you know, frick man, some of these um, hot little tamales, boys and girls in this neighborhood can walk faster than I can run. Even if you're not that, you are still getting a full body workout. You're still uh, challenging your heart. You still need to uh, take a break every once in a while. You still need to bring water with you. You still need to wear a hat or or um, remember to breathe because you are doing all of that walkies as if you're carrying, you know, uh, a couple 12 pound kettlebells, sorry, tw a couple 12 kilo kettlebells, couple eight kilo kettlebells, 
couple 16 kilo kettlebells, couple 18 kilo kettlebells, couple 20 kilo kettlebells, couple 24 kilo kettlebells. Oh, I just ordered a an Alico 28 kilogram single competition kettlebell which is in bright orange which is my favorite color so i'm going to fall in love with it when it comes tomorrow and i'm going to make it my make it my girlfriend we'll be together all the time i wonder if i've got the chutzpah to walk around the neighborhood with my backpack my kit bag and a bright orange kettlebell at the end of my arm dare me guys dare me please dare me i'm gonna do it i mean Ultimately, since I am the founder and moderator of the Reddit subreddit, Slow Jogging, I'm, I really do aspire desperately to return to slow jogging. But, you know, um, while the weather is so good, and the weather is especially fair today, let me see, the weather is especially fair today, it is, um, hey Google, what's the weather? It's 78 and partly cloudy. Today, it'll be mostly sunny, with a high of 80 and a low of 62. So it's beautiful today. It's actually smashing. Hey Google, what is the, um, uh, uh, the humidity today? The humidity today in Arlington is predicted to be 47%. Hey Google, is today considered to be a really nice day? I always hope for the best. Let's start by checking the weather. It'll be mostly sunny, with a high of 80 and a low of 62. Friday through Sunday in Arlington, it'll be sunny, with highs around 85 and lows around 63. It'll be sunny, with a high of 80 and a low of 56. Sounds awesome. Thank you. She's my uh, co-host. Um, she's not my only co-host. When she's not available, uh, Alexa's available too. So I like having, you know, I mean, you know, we radio personalities always have a, uh, a chipper, smart, smarter than I am uh, woman co-host. Uh, to try to turn down some of the toxic masculinity, cisgender, uh, heteronormative crap that this 52-year-old white man puts into the world. So that's uh, Alexa and Miss Google for me. Anyway, when we come back, I'd really like to hear from you guys. What do you think about walking? Um, I think that uh, soon, when it gets a little bit cooler and I'm not going to die of heat stroke, I have a 20 pound plate that I had uh, in my uh, 10 liter bullet go ruck. And I think I'm just going to make sure it's in every ruck that I use. And this one, it's, uh, it is a uh, go ruck GR Echo. I can put the 20 pound plate in there. I also have a 45 pound plate that I have in a go ruck rucker 4. Um, 25 liter and I might try that out we'll see what that does to me I don't want to kill myself but if I know that I'm probably not going to do walkies for hours and hours um, it might be good to go ahead and just carry some real heavy stuff uh, you know to the espresso bar and then home etc um, to maximize the expenditure and the challenge uh, during days that I know I'm not going to be doing as many steps or as much distance. Um, what I've stopped doing is I've stopped tracking all of these little out and abouts as uh, Strava, like GPS recorded walks on my uh, Garmin Instinct Solar One. I just let it track my steps and only if I expect to do a real walkabout, you know, which is going to be uh, two, three, four, five miles, I will make it a, a GPS thing. But if I'm just going to walk hither and thither, 
uh, to and fro from my apartment to Idito's uh, coffee and social house, there's no reason for me to uh, necessarily GPS it and share it with Strava. It looks kind of desperate to me. So that'll change though if I walk or run, sorry, if I slow jog or run or any of that kind of stuff. I'll always track that stuff. And you tell me guys, should I track all of my walking? Even if it's not, you know, an actual multi-mile trek? Uh, because if I don't do that, it's relatively ephemeral, right? Uh, if I don't track it, I can't really look back at it very much, and uh, I don't know. I'll be right back, though, and we'll uh, finish with the ways to contact me. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, you big diesel truck covered in cars, go away, I don't think that this can hide your diesel engine sounds. My name is Chris Abraham, I'm at chrisabraham.com, you can reach me at chris at abraham.su. If you want to know why I have a Soviet Union address, it's because I couldn't find... I've always wanted to have the email chris at abraham dot something. The only thing I... the only place I could find it was, uh, was uh, with a country that doesn't exist anymore, which is the former Soviet Union. They still... Su they still support the S... the RU people still support the SU people. Um, my phone number is plus one two oh two three five two five zero five one. Uh, you can reach me via text, via call, via WhatsApp, via signal, via telegram. I deleted Snapchat. I just never freaking use it, man. I have no desire to be that guy. Like I just can't. If if one person ever pinged me and said Hello, Chris. This is how I want to contact you. I'd have left it. But all I do is see updates and stuff from people who I haven't spoken to for years and who should be really posting on Twitter or Instagram anyway. Um, I, know to, I know that all my Gen Z friends, uh, they don't text each other. They Snapchat each other. But I'm not, I'm not even millennial. I'm Gen X. So the Gen Z guys should just be left alone as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm Twitter.com slash Chris Abraham. I'm Instagram.com slash Chris Abraham. I'm YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham. The home base for this podcast is Anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham. And, oh, uh, NoAgendaSocial.com slash at Chris. That's the one place I'm just Chris. And that's it. If you want to join my uh, my Mastodon instance, it's uh, giravik.su. Uh, you can just self-register there. I think I have it open. And I think you automatically follow me if you join. That might be interesting if we can start a community there. Other than that, I love you long time, and I will talk to you soon. Hasta mañana. Yo espero que sí. Uh, ciao. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss. Tschüssi. Ciao. Ciao. Au revoir. A tout à l'heure. A demain. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. 
and uh, aloha and mahalo, nui loa, ciao, good night, mahalo, goodbye. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, beep. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.